In our final podcast in this set, we're again joined by Fuchs from Deed, and we're covering other key relevant employment law topics in, in France. Yeah, so welcome back, Falk. Um, great to have you with us again. Um, in our second podcast, when we were looking at dismissals and terminations, we touched on the role that, that works councils might play. Keen to ask you now a, a sort of very general question to kick us off today. If you could please explain um, the different employee representative bodies in French companies and the roles they play. I'm thinking about works councils, unions, possibly other bodies. So that would be brilliant. Thank you. Sure. Well, uh, basically, the, um, the main staff representative bodies in France are, are the works councils and, and the trade unions. There are others, uh, but less important, I would say. Um, so starting with the works council, um, any employer who has had um, 11 or more employees for, for 12 months uh, must organize the election of, of a works council. Uh, so basically, uh, um, employees um, will run for the election, um, and um, in a company with a, a headcount of of more than eleven employees, but less than fifty employees, it uh, will be a small works council uh, with quite limited rights and, and prerogatives. But in a company with more than fifty employees, um, the works council has um, large um, rights um, and, and prerogatives, um, notably uh, um, the, uh, the right to be consulted on a regular basis on uh, the company's uh, strategic orientations, on the company's financial situation, um, on the company's HR policy, um, working conditions, etc. <coughs> so that's um, an important role that's played by, by the Works Council in, in companies with at least 50 employees. And then um, you also have trade unions. Um, so trade unions are not um, elected uh, like members of the Works Council. They are actually uh, designated by uh, um, national or local uh, trade unions. Uh, and their role uh, basically is uh, to negotiate um, collective agreements with the uh, with the employer, um, so that can be a collective agreement on on the working time, uh, on uh, health coverage, on whatever uh, topic uh, that might be of interest for for the employees and related to their working conditions, um, and and more, quite often actually. Um, these are the same people uh, sitting in the works uh, councils and um, being uh, trade unions uh, delegates in, in, in the company. Uh, but there are two different, two different roles, but uh, often, yeah, often the same people actually. Okay, that's, that's good to know. And in terms of, of sort of the subject of agreements in this area, and again, this is something we don't really have in the UK. Can you tell us a little bit more about sector level bargaining agreements, please? Yes, sure. Um, yeah, this is, um, well, maybe not specific to France because it's, uh, um, it's quite similar to what they have in, in Germany, for example, uh, but um, uh, probably uh, um, a bit more uh, exotic for uh, uh, English people. Um, in, in most industries, um, there are employers and employees organizations uh, who are discussing and negotiating um, agreements um, at industry level. Um, when they get, uh, when they sign such agreements, um, they, the, the agreements apply only to uh, uh, the companies uh, who are members of this uh, employer's organization. Um, however, um, most of the time, um, person to a, a government uh, decree or order, um, the uh, sector bargaining agreement is um, extended, so to speak, meaning that it, it must be applied to all companies active in the sector 
uh, irrespective of uh, whether they are actually members of the employer's organization who signed the agreement. Uh, so it becomes actually mandatory for all companies of, um, of, of the sector. And, and this, this is actually the case uh, in, in probably uh, 90 or 95% of, of, uh, of the businesses in France. Thanks. That's interesting. That's definitely, yeah, it's definitely something that we're not, we're not familiar with um, here in the UK. Um, another thing that we often get requests from clients is to prepare employee handbooks and, and they often have, you know, employees in other jurisdictions and they like to kind of ask if we can kind of standardize them across, across the jurisdictions. And I think when we often come to France, we find out that handbooks aren't very common. Is that right? And, and why is that the case? Yes, that's that's right. And it's indeed um, a, a request um, we do have quite often from from UK or US clients to implement or adapt a, the, an employee handbook in France. Uh, but generally, we're a bit reluctant uh, to that. Um, the reason behind this um, maybe that there are already a lot of rules applying on a collective basis in France, um, either deriving from the French labor code for all employers or deriving from um, the applicable um, sector collective bargaining agreement, uh, as we've just discussed, uh, for employees of a specific, uh, employers of a specific sector. Uh, and most of these collective rules cannot be derogated from um, in a way that would be less favorable uh, to the employees. Um, and so, uh, yeah, the, the reason I think um, we're not very fond of employee handbooks in France is that um, to, to a certain extent, it would only uh, replicate um, rules that are already mandatory or um, would have to adapt the employee handbook to make it compliant with the French labor code or to make it compliant with a sector collective bargaining agreement and just repeat the provisions that are in the French labor code and, and the sector collective bargaining agreement, whereas they apply anyway. Um, and another reason maybe is that uh, in a company with at least 50 employees, um, the rules relating to safety and discipline must be put together in a specific document known as the uh, Reglement Intérieur, so the, the internal rules of the company. Um, and again, uh, this could uh, replicate more or less uh, what's in the employee handbook. So that's probably another reason why uh, um, it's, it's not usual practice to have employee handbooks. Yeah. Thank you, Falk. Um, so final sort of general question to put to you in this podcast is around any other issues that you'd like to flag really to businesses that are either currently employing or looking to employ people in France. And I suppose one thought I had was whether it was worth mentioning um, working time restrictions, which again, we've had to some degree in the UK, but probably nothing like such a big issue um, as you have in France. Yes, absolutely. That, that's probably the first thing I, I would think of um, and the, the mere fact that you're mentioning this confirms that we're uh, well known to a certain extent uh, for our um, um, heavy and constraining um, working time regulation. Um, it's, it's, it's difficult to, to, to summarize, uh, but in a nutshell, um, the legal working week in France is uh, 35 hours. Um, it's been like this for um, uh, more than 20 years now. Um, and it's, it's been highly criticized by, by employers, but it's actually um, appreciated by, by employees. And, and because of that, um, over the last uh, 20 years, um, no government has dared to um, abolish this uh, 35 hour um, working week legislation but they have introduced quite a number of exceptions, uh, making it uh, difficult today to, to handle and to, to understand for, for employers. Um, but maybe 
uh, a few things just to, um, to, to bear in mind is that 35 hours per week uh, would be the, the standard working time for uh, um, blue collar employees or clerical staff or low ranked employees to, 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 to put it this way. Um, but there are alternatives for, uh, for more senior employees. Uh, one of the uh, popular alternatives is to have the employment although the working time uh, calculated in days per year rather than in hours per week. Um, so typically uh, um, a manager could work 218 days per year, uh, but without any defined number of hours worked uh, every day that is worked. Um, so that's um, one alternative. And for very senior uh, employees, um, executives, um, it's, it's possible to, to derogate uh, completely from a, a 35 hour working week uh, legislation and even from the, the limitation to 218 days for those who have a, a working time in days uh, agreement. Uh, but that's only really limited to, to the most senior employees. So, uh, of course, it's, it's quite tempting to uh, um, provide in an employment contract that. Uh, this exception will apply, but it's actually uh, strictly controlled by, uh, by the tribunal in case of litigation. Perfect, thanks. That's, um, that's really helpful. And thank you ever so much. I think that concludes um, our, our series of podcasts. So thank you, Fulk. Um, and obviously, if anyone has any queries on the topics we've discussed during these podcasts, please do, please do get in touch with us or Fulk. And we'll be back next month covering another jurisdiction.